Glory be to God. Good to see all of you. And as I welcome all of you once again for our Sunday evening service, once again, I want to encourage each and every one of you when we worship, please engage your spirit in worship. Because if you get carried away, if you get distracted, if you are focusing on other things, you are the one who is losing out. Okay, So worship is not the time for any of us to lose out on. Okay? I don't know how many of you are serious about worship, but I want every day for us to become lovers of worship in Jesus. Because if we don't do that, if we take worship for granted, my precious people of God, you all are the ones who are going to lose it. Okay? So this evening, the title of the message is going to be Shortcut Prayers. Shortcut Prayers. Okay? This is what the Lord has been showing me. And uh, the title is going to be Shortcut Prayers. And this is not the type of prayer that God wants us to pray. But somewhere down the line, we have prayed this kind of prayers. Probably you may be a precious one who is praying shortcut prayers at the moment. You know, during this season, could be because of uh, the challenging situations that you may be going through. But it's important to understand that if we are praying shortcut prayers, the language of our prayer needs to change. Now, how many of you pray? You believe in the power of prayer? You need to also understand that shortcuts are not the best always. How many of you have ever fallen into some sort of trouble because you tried to take a shortcut? You know, that has happened to me many times, very especially when driving. Now, in the UK, I don't do that because I don't know the roads that well here. But in Sri Lanka, my goodness, how many times has that happened? Because to drive in Colombo, I don't need the map. I don't need Google. I don't need Waze. I don't need anything because I know most of the roads, like the back of my mind. Because I have driven so much in and out, you know, doing ministry. But sometimes when trying to take sh shortcuts, I drive through certain shortcuts and then come to, you know, I come to a spot where that road is closed. Oh, then I have to do a U-turn and go all that way back. So shortcuts are not really productive. Shortcuts, in the long run, can cost you big time. You need to understand. And even in this Christian journey, you need to understand that Shortcuts are not the best. Shortcuts will not take you anywhere. This is why you know, the Lord is reminding me right now what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse number 13. What did Jesus say? Enter through the narrow gate, not through the gate that is wide open because he said wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. So that is one shortcut a lot of people take. Why? Because when the gate is wide open, it's easy for people to walk through that gate and they think that it's a good, easy shortcut that they can take. And do you know that even with our prayers, sometimes we pray shortcut prayers, which is not the best. So some of you may not even like the message that you're hearing today, but I have to preach this because it's what the Lord has shown. And this message will deliver you, will help you to be strengthened in that challenge that you are going through. So let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. We are going to read verses 7 to 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to 10. This is what we are going to look at. We are going to look at something that Paul is telling based on what he was going through. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 to 10. Paul is telling, and lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, 
I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This is the classic example. Paul is showing us by his own example, by his own self, how he prayed a shortcut prayer. He is telling that he had a thorn in the flesh, which he took to the Lord and said, Lord, will you please take away this thorn from me? But what did the Lord say? God didn't say, okay, I'm going to take it out of you. But instead, God said, my grace is sufficient for you and my strength is made perfect in weakness. Now, there are so many misinterpretations uh, and misinterpretations about this thorn. Okay? Because some people, some precious people, they believe that this thorn is to do with a, 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 a long-standing sickness that Paul had. But nowhere in history do you find Paul having a long-standing history. Now, how many of you can remember the study we did about two years ago? What this thorn in the flesh is, I, I, I shared, I showed it from the very specially from the Old Testament. But this main thorn that he's talking about is persecution. One of the biggest thorns that was given to Paul by who? By God himself is persecution. I'm going to prove this to you. Okay, I'm going to prove this to you from scripture today, and I'm going to show you. We're going to, I'm going to take you verse by verse, step by step this evening so that you will get a deeper understanding and a deeper revelation about what your Christian journey is. Again, the Lord is reminding me what he said. But did Jesus say, if anyone wants to follow me, do what? You have to take your cross and follow me. Jesus didn't say, you know, in, in Sri Lanka, we say, you know, when you go to someone's house, don't don't go AWW. You know what this means? Atavanavana. Right? They say, don't go empty-handed, just waving your hands. So Jesus didn't say, when you want to follow me, you come AWW. Atavanavana, you come, just waving your hands. You know, you'll be free from everything. No, Jesus said, if you want to follow me, take up your own cross and follow me. Right? Now, we need to understand, most often today, believers, they try to take shortcuts around the challenges that they go through. You know the sad thing that happens when they go through a challenge and when they want to take a shortcut to navigate through that challenge, they end up in a, even in a great mess. This is why you need to understand there's, there's so much that you have to be focused about when you are going through a challenge. We are going to look at all of this. So one of the biggest shortcut prayers believers ask God or believers pray when they go through a challenge is, Lord, please take this away from me. Lord, please take me out of this situation. Lord, please take me out of this, the, the circumstances that I'm in. This is the biggest shortcut prayer every believer prays. Now, I don't think there's anyone here who can say that we have never prayed this prayer, including me. Even I have prayed, but the Lord has taught me over the years that we have to mature. So this is exactly what Paul prayed. Can you see? Paul is telling, I went to the Lord and I said, Lord, can you please take this thorn away from me? But did God do that? No. God said, my grace is sufficient for you. And my strength is made perfect in weakness. Now, can I tell you something the Holy Spirit is telling me right now? This thorn that Paul is talking about, my precious people of God, is persecution. Can I tell you why it can't be sickness? If God imputed a sickness into Paul, God will be going ahead. His, uh, God himself will be going against it, his own word. Why Isaiah 53 verse 5 says that by his stripes 
we are healed. Psalm 103 verse number 3 says that God heals every sickness and every disease. But like I said, nowhere in history do we find any historian recording that Paul had a long-term illness. So therefore, please don't miss, uh, listen to misinterpretations and receive wrong doctrines into your spirit and go and embrace sicknesses, saying, oh, this is a thorn that is supposed to be in my flesh. No, if that is the case, then that is contradicting the word of God. Let me show you that this thorn is really, so now I pray that you understand what this thorn is. The same way all of us, we may have different, different thorns, right? And you need to understand in the challenges that you go through in life, you must know how not to take shortcuts and how not to pray shortcut prayers. Will you lift up your hands to the Lord and say, Lord, teach me not to pray shortcut prayers. Lord. I want to become a mature believer, Lord, in the name of Jesus. So, number one, we need to understand that an integral part of Paul's calling was having to endure severe persecution. That is the first point we need to understand. Paul prayed and asked God to take away the thorn, which is persecution, out of him. But we need to understand an integral part of his calling was having to endure severe persecution. We are going to look at what happened when Paul had the direct encounter with Jesus in Acts chapter 9. How many of you remember the powerful encounter he had in Acts chapter 9 while he was on his way to Damascus? Then God spoke to another disciple there called Ananias. And God told Ananias to go and pray and lay hands on Paul. And Ananias at once, he got scared because he knew what Paul was doing, his previous character. What does God tell him? That is what we're going to look at. Acts chapter 9, verse 15 and 16. Acts chapter 9, verse 15 and 16. Look at the response God is giving Ananias when he got scared. God is saying, go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Can you see what God is telling Ananias? He's telling, go, don't worry. I have called him and he is called so much so that because he has to go through so much of suffering and persecution for my name's sake. So if you are a person who has studied the book of Acts, you will know what kind of persecution this single man called Paul had to go all by himself. So much of persecution. And let me tell you something that you may not like to hear. But I have to tell you because this is scripture. I'm preaching the truth. I mean, if you want to listen to the truth, because it's only the truth that it will set you free. God has not called me to sugarcoat the gospel and preach. We can't share our lives. We have to preach the truth. And the truth is, whether you like it or not, as a child of God, as a believer, you will have to go through persecution from time to time. So whether you like it or not, it's not an option. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 12. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 12, the Bible says, those who want to live godly will suffer persecution. So my precious people of God, you need to understand. Don't get alarmed. Don't get shocked just because you are in a, a troublesome, challenging situation because this is the Christian life. The Christian life is not a challenge-free life. The Christian life is a life where you have to endure challenges, persecutions, you name it. No matter what comes your way, you must have that attitude and the determination to go through any challenge because the Lord is there for you. So number one is, you need to understand that an integral part of Paul's calling was having to endure severe persecution. We can't say just persecution because he's a person who went through severe persecution. Now, number two, we are going to look at what Paul says about how he had to go through severe persecution. So Paul had to endure severe persecution. This is why, so it's naturally we can understand a person who had to endure such great persecution for him to say, Lord, please take this away from me. It's understandable. 
because he had to go through that kind of persecution. So 2 Corinthians chapter 11, we are going to read verses 22 to 28. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 22 to 28. Paul is telling, are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. Now look at what he's telling. As a minister in Christ, he's telling, I am in labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequently, in deaths often. From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeys often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and in thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, besides the other things that comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches. So while I was reading this list, how many of you were praying? Oh, Pastor B, stop, that's enough, that's enough. <laughs> Can you see the list that Paul is giving? How many of you have been shipwrecked in your life? How many of you have been stoned for sharing the gospel? None of us. Not even me. So can you see the list that he gives? This is what has happened. To him. He's telling on a daily basis. He was going through this. On a daily basis. When you read Acts 13, 14, 15, these chapters, you can see how on a daily basis he was persecuted by the Jews. So my precious people of God, he is one man who went through severe persecution. The reason why I'm sharing all of this is for you to understand the way you need to change the language of your prayer. If you are praying shortcut prayers today, saying, oh Lord, take this away from me. Oh Lord, I need money, please give me money, Lord. Oh Lord, oh, no. That fellow said that to me, Lord. Tomorrow when I wake up, Lord, may I hear that he has gone to be with you, Lord. No, no you don't pray, pray prayers like that. Yeah. So, number three, the third thing we need to understand is Paul was called to endure great persecution, but we need to understand there are great things that happened while Paul went through persecution. There are great things that happened while Paul went through persecution. Now, the thorn that you may be having in your life might be something completely different. You may be having an ongoing battle with something else. But while you are journeying with the Lord, enduring all this persecution, my precious people of God, you need to understand, there is a flip side of the coin, which is there are great things that happen even in the midst of persecution. I'm going to share three powerful things that happened to Paul while he was going through persecution. How many of you want to know? These great things that happen. Number one, he heard the Holy Spirit better. He discovered the voice of God better while he was going through persecution, severe persecution, in moments of severe persecution that no human being on earth would have gone through. Yet in those very moments, the Bible tells us he was hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit even more better. Well, take a, a good look at a good example. In Acts chapter 23, we can see when the Jews in Jerusalem, when they plotted to kill Paul, in Acts 23, verse 10 and 11, that's what we are going to read. Now, when there arose a great decision, the commander, now listen to this, huh? the commander, fearing lest Paul might be pulled to pieces by them, Oh my goodness, the commander got worried because the, at that time, the Jews, they were surrounding Paul and they were so against Paul, they wanted to kill Paul. And the commander thought, oh my goodness, because of their fierceness, Paul might be torn into pieces. He commanded the soldiers to go down and take him by force from among them and bring him into the barracks. 
Then look at what happens. Verse number 11. But the following night, the following night, the Lord stood by Paul and said, Be of good cheer, Paul. For as you have testified for me in Jerusalem, so you must also bear witness at Rome. My goodness, here is a man in Jerusalem whom the Jews want to you know, cut Paul into pieces. That was the kind of anger that they had towards him. And look at what is happening. God is speaking to Paul and telling, be of good cheer, Paul. As you have testified for me, in Jerusalem, you must also do the same in Rome. Can you see in the midst of severe persecution, he is hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit of God. Because if he was listening to his own self, his own self would have dictated terms and conditions to him saying, oh, this is enough, I'm being persecuted, and oh, I don't want any more. This is enough for today. And Saul would have easily given up. Another person would have easily turned away. They would have run away. They would have fled. But look at what God is telling him. The Holy Spirit of God is speaking to him. You know today the, what the problem is? The problem today is that many believers, they, do, they haven't trained their spirit to hear the voice of God. This is the biggest problem today. Believers are not journeying with the Lord. They are not spending time with the Holy Spirit. And as a result, they haven't trained they are spirit to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit of God. Because of that, in the midst of the challenge, the only prayer that most believers pray today is, Lord, please take this away from me. And you know what? God doesn't take away the situation sometimes. Because God wants to teach you how to endure. God wants to teach you to become mature in the spirit, to become a mature believer. Because that is the heart of God for us to become mature sons and daughters who will walk with great authority. Do you know that your authority in Christ will not strengthen unless you go through challenging moments? Because the more you go through challenging situations in life, that's when the authority of God in you will also strengthen. Amen. So, number one, he heard the Holy Spirit better in the midst of persecution. Number two, other disciples were strengthened by watching him endure challenges. Do you know that when people see how well you endure challenges, do you know that others get strengthened? Personally, you know, sometimes, let me give an example. Now, I'm in touch with all of you very often. And I know the kind of challenges that all of you go through, right? So because of that, now I'm strengthened when I think about the kind of challenges that some of you are going through. And yet you are holding on. Yet you are holding on to the promise of God. You are not giving up. You don't want to throw in the towel that easily. You keep fighting as a strong believer. And that blesses the heart of someone else. Have you ever thought about this? This is exactly what happened to Paul. While he was enduring all this persecution, the Bible says there were many other apostles, many other disciples who were strengthened just by watching Paul. Acts chapter 14, verse 9 to, 19 to 22. Acts chapter 14, verses 19 to 22 is what we are going to read. This was in Antioch. Then Jews from Antioch and Iconium came there, and having persuaded the multitudes, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. Now look at what happens to Paul. They, he gets stoned, and people thought that he was dead because of the intensity that he was stoned. However, when the disciples gathered around him, he rose up and went into the city. Paul was an extraordinary, remarkable guy. Oh my goodness, I can't just fathom the, the kind of strength that this person had in him. Because he is, he is a guy who had just been stoned and people thought that he died. And he gets up, he goes into the city and the Bible says the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. The Bible doesn't say that he went to Derby with Barnabas to have a holiday. No, he went to preach the word of God. Listen to verse number 21 and 22. And when they had preached the gospel to the city and made many disciples, 
they return to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the soul, the souls of the disciples. Oh my goodness. Guy who was just stoned, bleeding profusely, next day goes to Berea, makes some new disciples, strengthens their soul, exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying, we must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. My goodness, look at the message that this guy is preaching to fellow disciples. What is he telling? He is telling through many tribulations. That's how we enter the kingdom of God. And today, what is the gospel that is preached today? You enter the kingdom of God if you sow 5,000 pounds right now. In the screen below, you know, right, have a good look. And they will say, you know, we are praying for someone's eyesight to be healed right now. Oh, the person who got healed right now, you can see the, the bank account details right now under the screen. So, a thousand pounds right now. Can you see what the gospel has become today? But can you see the real, authentic gospel that Paul, the greatest apostle ever, is preaching? What is he saying? We must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. And for those of you, my precious people of God, you are enduring great tribulation right now. You are going through challenges, so many challenging situations in your life. There is only one word I have to tell you. Congratulations. I'm happy for you because you are not ready to throw in the towel. You are prepared to endure and you keep enduring. That is the way you enter the kingdom of God. Through hardships. Jesus led by example. Jesus had to die on the cross. It was painful death. Salvation didn't come at an easy price. The ultimate price had to be paid by Jesus. So my precious people of God, you must learn to carry your cross. How many of you will say today, Lord, teach me how to carry my cross. The cross that you want me to carry, Lord, teach me how to do it in the name of Jesus. So he heard the Holy Spirit of God better. And other disciples were strengthened by watching him endure challenges. My precious people of God, so you need to understand when you go through a challenge in your life, you need to develop the ability to hear the voice of God better. And as you conduct, you need to understand the way you conduct yourself in a challenging situation ministers to others. You know, ministering to others is the way that you serve God. So today, one of your prayers should be, Lord, help me to conduct myself the way you want me to conduct myself when I'm going through a challenge. Because now, you know, the way you conduct yourself in a challenge ministers to other people. Now, we are coming into the last section of today's sermon where we are going to spend another two hours, okay? All right. Fourth section is, what are you praying today? This is the question. We are going to actually spend a little bit of time here. What are you praying today? Take a moment and think about the prayers that you are praying. Is the only prayer that you are praying to the Lord is, oh Lord, take this away from me. Oh Lord, take me out of this situation, Lord. Oh, this is what my colleague said, Lord, at office. Lord, tomorrow when I go, may that person, oh, may they have found another place to go. And no, is this the kind of prayer that you are praying? My precious people of God, if you are praying prayers like that, you are praying shortcut prayers. There are no shortcuts to the kingdom of God. The way to the kingdom of God is rigorous. That's what the Bible says. It won't be easy. You'll have to go through challenges. But that is the way to enter the kingdom of God. You must train yourself to endure challenging times. So, with the question, what are you praying today? Are you asking God to take away something that you are meant to be? Probably, you may be a person who is asking God to take you out of that situation. Whereas God wants you to be in that particular situation during this season. Matthew 26, verse number 39. I'm going to show you an example from Jesus when he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. 
Matthew chapter 26, verse number 39, the Bible tells us just before Judas came and he betrayed him with the other people in the Garden of Gethsemane. Then a little look at two prayers that Jesus prayed, okay? The first prayer in Matthew 26, verse number 39, the Bible says that Jesus went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Now, Jesus, because he was in human form, the Bible tells us he, was, he knew that he was about to be crucified. And the Bible says that the, the, the drops of sweat that was falling down, that was pouring down his face, it turned into blood. That is extreme agony because he knew that he had to go through that no person has ever gone through. Now, my precious people of God, Jesus is also praying here and he's saying, Lord, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. But my precious people of God, Jesus, our Messiah, our Savior, had to be in that place. He had to be in that position. He had to be in that situation to drink the cup of wrath. Today, are you asking God to take you out of that situation, not realizing that there is something that God wants you to do in that situation? Probably you may be in a challenge that God wants to use you where he can't use anyone else. God couldn't use anyone else to drink his cup of wrath. It was only Jesus who could do that. Number two, have you discerned the will of God in the storm that you are in? This is what happens. Why a lot of people pray shortcut prayers and say, Lord, take this away from me, is because they haven't discerned the will of God for them in the storm. Even in the storm that you are going through, my precious people of God, you need to understand there is God's will for you to be in that storm. There's something that God wants you to do. Now, because we looked at Paul, let me show it from Paul. It was a must for Paul to go through all of that persecution. It was a necessity. It was a must for him to go through all this persecution. In Lystra, in Beria, in Derby, in Iconium, in Jerusalem, in Rome, you name it. Wherever he went to preach the word of God. It was a necessity. It was an absolute must for him to go through. Why? Because so much that happened. He developed his ability to hear the voice of God better. Other people, other disciples, they were strengthened when they saw the kind of persecution that he was going through. Many people were baptized. They received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There were people who, who gave their life for the Lord. My precious people of God, so much happened while he was journeying in persecution. Jesus had to drink the cup of wrath. There was a purpose for Paul to go through all those storms that he went through. There was a purpose for Jesus also having to go through that painful death for you and I. Because it was only him who could drink the cup of rum. Today, there are some of you, you need to ask the Lord, Lord, show me if there is something that you want me to do in this storm that I'm going through. You'll be shocked when the Lord shows you You'll be shocked because up until today, up until right now, because this, the time you are hearing this message and you didn't know that God has a will for you in that storm. Because most often people think you go through a storm. The only thing that you want is to get out of the storm. And the only thing that you want God to do is also to take you out of that storm. And you also think that the only thing that God wants to do is also to take you out of the storm. But Joseph, had to be in that storm for as long as 13 years. Before he became the prime minister of Egypt, for as long as 13 years, God didn't take him out of that time of, out of the storm. It didn't happen. For one whole night, Daniel had to be in the midst of lies. God watched over him. My precious people of God, you need to understand, although you are going through in a situation, 
God is watching over you. You need to change the language of your prayer today without saying, Lord, take this away from me. You must say, Lord, show me what has to be done. Show me what you will be. And here we come to the second prayer that Jesus prayed. First he prayed and said, Lord, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. And in Matthew chapter 26, verse number 42, he prays again for the second time saying, Oh, my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, let you will be done. Can you see how even Jesus changes the language of his prayer? He's telling, Lord, unless I drink this cup, before he was telling, Lord, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. But now he's telling, unless I drink it now, let it be unto me. So my precious people of God, it's high time for you to change the language of your prayer. If you are praying or if you have been praying, shortcut prayers. So what should you do in the storm you are in? Okay, I'm going to share five important things that you need to do as you journey in the storm that you are in. And even in time to come, there's no guarantee that you will not have to go through a challenging situation in your life. You may have to. You don't know when, but somewhere down the line, you could be, you know, something can surprise you. And when that happens, my precious people of God, number one, change the way you pray. Change the way you pray. Get rid of your shortcut prayers and learn to be joyful and love God more in the midst of the storm. That's the important thing that you need to do. Change the way you pray. Now, after Paul tells about, you know, how I told God to take this away from me and how God said, you know, my, my strength is made perfect in all your weaknesses and my grace is sufficient for you. Then look at what Paul is telling in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 10. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 10, look at what Paul is telling. He is telling, therefore, now Paul has also realized what he was called to do. He is telling, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Here, 10 verses down the line, Paul has come to a place of revelation. He has understood and he is saying, therefore, I take great pleasure in anything, be it an infirmity, be it a reproach, in needs, persecution, in distresses, for in everything, for Christ's sake. Because I know when I am weak, then I am strong. My precious people of God, you need to understand, the moment you get this revelation, every moment you think that you are weak, you are actually strong. That's why God said to Paul, my strength is made perfect in all your weaknesses. Number two, ask God to reveal his will for you in the storm. This is what I have been preaching in the last couple of minutes. Ask God to reveal his will for you in the storm. In the very storm that you are going through in your life, there is something God wants you to do. Because if the only thing that you are focused about is God removing that challenge out of your life, you are going to miss out on the bigger picture. You are going to miss out on what God wants to do for you. Because even in the midst of the storm, there is a great blessing awaiting you. So don't pray shortcut prayers and miss out on that blessing that God has kept for you. Don't keep wasting time by praying shortcut prayers. Then, number three, let God strengthen the anointing in you during the storm. Let God strengthen the anointing you in during the storm. Take the storm that you are going through as one of the greatest opportunities for God to strengthen the anointing. Now, how many of you know that you are anointed by the Lord? Every believer has the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So this anointing, one of the best ways that you can 
develop the anointing that God has given you is when you are journeying through a storm in life. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 and 9. Look at what Paul is telling. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 and 9, he's telling, concerning this very thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, what, is, what does God say? My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. My precious people of God, when you realize the grace that is sheltering you, even in the storm, when your strength becomes so powerful in your weaknesses, the anointing will become unstoppable. Hallelujah. Then, two more points. Let God teach you to sleep peacefully in the storm. I have come across many precious believers who struggle to sleep. When I say sleep, it's not only physically. Not being able to sleep, that also means that you're spiritually at unrest, at a position or at a place of unrest. In the moments, in these storms that you go through, let God teach you how to sleep peacefully in the storm. Because in Matthew chapter 8, verse 23 and 24, the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 8, verse 23 and 24, that when Jesus got into the boat and started journeying across the lake with his disciples, there was a, a mighty storm. And verse number 24 says, suddenly a fierce storm struck the lake with waves breaking into the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. Look at what the Bible is telling. Now here, all of a sudden, there was a massive storm and waves were coming into the boat. But Jesus was fast asleep. My precious people of God. In Jesus' name, I declare, starting from today, with the revelation the Holy Spirit of God is imparting to you and I by the preaching of this word today, that in the midst of any fierce storm in life that you may have to go through, I declare in Jesus' name that you will be able to sleep peacefully, that you will not be in a place of unrest in your spirit, in an unsettled place in the name of Jesus. I pray that as this happens to you, that you will also help other believers to come to that place of rest. This is why the Bible says, strive to enter into his rest. That's what the Bible says, strive to enter into that place of rest. Number five, the last one. Let God teach you to guard his joy in you. Let God teach you to guard his joy in you when you are going through a troublesome time in your life. Because Nehemiah, 8, Nehemiah chapter 8, verse number 10, the Bible says, this, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The last verse for today, Psalm chapter 30, verse number 5. Psalm chapter 30, verse number 5. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. My precious people of God, I want to declare that your time of weeping is going to be turned around for a joyful time. Keep enduring, keep enduring. You know, there are times, you know, the Bible says, we don't hear, for example, after these 13 years, these 13 rough years that Joseph went through in his life, we don't hear after he became the prime minister of Egypt, we don't hear him going through any more challenges like he went through in the previous 13 years. The same way the Bible tells us in uh, Matthew chapter 4, when Satan came to tempt Jesus, when he failed, the Bible tells us that Satan departed him for a season. Do you know that when you get over this current situation that you are going through in your life for a big season, you may not have to go through anything else. This is what the Christian life is. You don't know what tomorrow holds for you. But my precious people of God, don't get worried about tomorrow and lose today's joy in your heart. This is what Jesus said. As a matter of fact, he's reminding me what he said in uh, Matthew chapter 6, 
verse number 34, I believe this is uh, the last verse in the Gospel of uh, Matthew chapter 6. Let me turn the Bible. It's either verse 33 or 34. If, not, if I'm not mistaken, it's 34. That is 34. Jesus is telling, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Now, for those of you, why the Lord prompted me to give this verse out of me, where all of us have, is because there are many of you here. They are worrying about tomorrow. And Jesus is telling, don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So my precious people of God, while I was preparing with the message today, what the Lord had told me was, son, you preach the message and let them do their part. Because this is a message about individual responsibility. You listen to the word of God, you receive the revelation and you say, Lord, now I want to do this. So my precious people of God, as we begin to worship the Lord once again, I pray that you will make it your prayer and say, Lord, help me not to pray shortcut prayers. Lord, in this journey, Lord, that I'm journeying with you, I don't want any shortcuts, Father. I want to take the, or the original road that you want me to take, Father, to remain on the right track. And Lord, I want to do things right, the way that you want me to do it. That is you. Let's all lift up our hands unto the Lord and say, Lord, fill me with wisdom. Lord, fill me with the wisdom so that I will be wise. And Lord, that I will always look unto you. The Bible says, look unto the Lord. The psalmist says, I will look unto the Lord where my help comes from. Because my help comes from the Lord of heaven and earth. Your help comes from God himself. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me wishes to see things like you do. Lord, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom to know just what to do. Lord, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me wishes, yes, Lord, to see things like you do. Lord, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom, yes, Lord, to know just what to do. You know, the Lord is prompting me to say, to share two scriptures with all of you. The first thing that he is telling me is that help is prepared for you. For most of you who are enduring, you're going through challenging situations, the Lord wants me to tell you, help is already prepared for you. You know, as Jesus was, as he took the cross to his shoulders and as he started journeying the Mount of Calvary, the Bible tells us that God has prepared help. There's a person by the name of Simon who came and who helped Jesus to carry the cross. Help us prepare. Lord, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me wings. Yes, Lord, to see things like you do. Lord, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom to know just what to do. Second thing the Lord wants me to tell some of you is you're feeling so tired and weary is because your main focus is the challenge that you're going through. Your main focus has to be Jesus and the Holy Spirit of God. That's why 
is prompting me to share Matthew chapter 11 verse number 28. Matthew chapter 11 verse number 28 Jesus says, All those who are burdened and heavy laden, come to me and I will give you rest. Even this time, in this situation, in this storm in your life that you are going through, the only person who can give you rest is the Holy Spirit of God. If that is you, lift up your hands to the Lord and say, Lord, help me to be focused on you. Help me not to be focused on the challenges that I'm going through, Father. Help me, Lord, not to get carried away, distracted by these challenges. Lord, because I know my place of rest is you, Lord. Your place of rest is in Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. Lord, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision, hallelujah, to know just what to do. Lord, I look to you, you're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom, to know just what to do. Oh, I will love you. And I will love you, Lord, my shield. Yes, I will love you, Lord, my God, forever all my days. I will love you, Lord. The Lord is prompting me to worship Him with the song. Hallelujah. We're going to say, Lord. Through it all, I'm going to trust in you, Father. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned depend upon his word. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There were times I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave blessed consolation. That my trials come to only make me strong. The ideal worship song for us to sing. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through. I've learned to depend upon His Word. Now for those of you, you've been let down by people. The second verse will minister to all of you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I've been to many places And I've seen so many faces But there were times I felt so all alone And in those lonely hours, yes, those precious lonely hours, Jesus made me feel like I'm the soul. So now I'm singing through it all, through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus, I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon His Word, and I exalt Thee. As we worship Him, you can get your communion elements ready. I will Oh, 
elements ready you can take them into your hand as we prepare ourselves partake in the table of grace in the name of Jesus thank you Give yourself willingly as a willing sacrifice, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I honor your body, Lord Jesus. Thank you. For, thank you for every stripe you took on your back for me, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, you may partake the body of Christ. Amen. shedding your sinless blood for me. You had to shed your innocent blood for me, Jesus, because of my sin. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for by your sinless blood, by your shed blood today, all my sin is covered. And if you know that you need to repent of anything, make this a time. Make this an opportunity for you to repent before the Lord and say, Father, forgive me, Holy Spirit of God, for I have grieved you and if I have grieved you in any way that I do not know, knowingly, unknowingly, intentionally or unintentionally, I'm sorry, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you for your mercies that are renewed every single day. And Lord, I bring all my faults, my mistake, under the blood of Jesus. As I partake in your blood, Lord, thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. You may partake the blood of Christ, the blood of Christ, darling. Amen. So as today's message is about individual responsibility, I pray that all of us will take our individual responsibility in the Lord and get rid of all of those shortcut prayers that we may have been praying. Become more focused and led by the revelation the Holy Spirit of God gives us. Amen. So lift up, let's lift up our hands unto the Lord as we sing the blessing of God. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. And keep you, make 
his face shine upon you be gracious to you the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace the Lord bless you and keep you Make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord turned his face towards you and gave you peace. Ah, 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 amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen.